you can find a deal. In fact, that's how I got this Bonafide P127, my native Slayer Propel 10, was buying them used. However, there's some things you gotta look out for so you don't end up getting one of these home and find out you got a lemon. So I got 13 red flags. I'm gonna lower these kayaks down and walk you through them. Going down. All right, guys, the first thing you wanna look for when you're looking at a kayak is that if you come to the stern back here and this hull identification number, if that is scratched off or the plate is missing, well, to be honest with you, walk away because it's likely stolen. There is no good reason why this hidden number should be removed outside of someone stole it and they're trying to remove identifying information. All right, number two, what I look for is check out the modification work. Fishing kayaks come bare. And so if you see a lot of modifications, see a lot of DIY modifications, don't freak out. A lot of the DIY modifications can actually be better than some of the commercial stuff out there. Um, for example, we'll go to the front of this kayak. If you go underneath, you will see a keel guard. Well, this is one that I made. It's made out of Kydex and it's held up like a boss um, through really heavy season. And I would highly recommend that. So if you see DIY modification work, for instance, back here I had a crack in my native Slayer 10 and I fixed that up and I have a video on it. Just simply ask them, make sure that that modification work is up to par with your standards. And so ask them what they did, how they did it, just so you can make sure like, oh, that seems like a really quick fix that won't hold up or whoa, it's probably stronger than it was before. The next thing you wanna search for is any type of hairline cracks. Now here's the problem. These things are gonna be very difficult to find, especially if they're hairline, unless you put pressure on the kayak. And so places that would put pressure on the kayak is where you get pressure on the kayak when you're using it. So right around the seat, check around. This is where the seat's gonna hold up. Just check around these areas. Make sure when you put pressure on these that you don't see any cracks because you don't want to get home and find that out. Another thing you can do really quick, you can do it at a glance, is just check for warps. So the problem with checking for warps is a lot of times you're not going to see the warp on the top of the kayak. So you're going to have to flip it over. So let's go ahead and do that really fast. Now, I would highly recommend flipping a kayak over anyway. So you're going to check to see if there's any cracks or whatever on the bottom side. But just take a step back to see if there's any warps. A lot of times these warps are going to happen on a kayak uh, because they're stored improperly, maybe for the long term on the hull. And sometimes when that happens that can deform or warp a hull so flip over your kayak and take a glance at the bottom all right next thing especially if you have a rudder control system like i do here just check the rudder handle as you can see this one that's a little bit a little bit loose you don't want to see that you want it nice and tight uh, make sure it works well if you go back here especially if you're buying an older kayak sometimes the older older models were come stock with wire this was upgraded this is a burley pro upgrade and so just take a look at it make sure the dyneema that's used here isn't frayed um, just check that over because these replacement kits these burly pro replacement kits are not cheap so keep that in mind all right so the other thing i like to do is bring a screwdriver and i'm really just looking at one place here i'm looking on the back gear track because if the kayak was potentially overloaded and not really taken care of when it's being transported if they have had these native sidekicks on them and a lot of times what will happen if it has too much weight on it these screws and gear tracks will rip out and so what i like to do is just check the back gear track make sure these screws aren't stripped out and it's not just sitting there that's not something you want to find when you get home or when you load this all up and go to move it and this rips out and you can't prove that it was like that when you bought it or it might even be too much time between you bought it um, versus identifying it there because if this is stripped out uh, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to try to fix it in order to use your landing gear that is old school landing gear uh, these are the new and upgraded sidekicks these things are freaking awesome but if you're trying to move a kayak to 120 pounds any significant distance this is what you're going to want all right next thing you want to look for on the bottom when you turn it over is river rash now don't freak out if you see river rash because that's why you're getting a 30 to 40 percent discount on your used fishing kayak what you're looking for is really deep gashes and um, if you see some up toward the front toward the bow that's a pretty deep gash right here caught something but these are built on the front end to have more plastic on them for running it into the ground whenever you're kind of landing your fishing kayak so if you see river rash no big deal because you can create one of these which is kind of a keel guard i created this one out of kydex it's held up like a boss um, kydex has a rockwell hardness of 90 and so this thing is awesome everyone keeps asking me hey does that thing hold up does it hold up yes it's holding up just fine i'm probably gonna end up putting one on my bonafide p127 and so watch out for that video coming in the future but if you want to know how to make one of these really simple really inexpensive way to do that i'll throw the video in the description below so the next thing i'm gonna look at is your seal and hatch covers so on this particularly if i'm looking at the seal around here just rub your finger along it if it starts to rub off that might give you a signal that it was kind of left out in the sun and which might mean you know sun and uv rays is polyethylene plastics kind of kryptonite and so it might just give you a clue that it might not have been stored correctly just take a 
take a feel to the rubber hatches. Does those seem brittle or broken? This thing was stored outside. And if I saw a kayak, a nice fishing kayak that was stored outside, I'm telling you what, I'd probably walk away. So just check that out. If you're looking to some of the newer models, um, this over here, they roto molded in those type of things. And I don't see any hatches. The hatches that are now on them are thermoformed like this. They're hard plastic. And so I actually don't see a single soft plastic piece, which is nice because a lot of times when you store these, mice will actually chew. If you store in these long term, they'll chew these rubber covers. They'll chew basically anything <laughs> that's kind of soft plastic. All right, another red flag and something I would definitely do if you're looking at a used kayak is I would take all the scupper plugs out. And this is what happens a lot of the times. There'll be a crack down in the scupper. And so why this happens is that people actually use scupper hole carts, whether DIY or you buy them, on fishing kayaks that were not designed to withstand that type of pressure within the scupper hole. And so whenever they're pulling that kayak up out of the water, up over any type of ledge, they're creating a lot of torsion on the inside of that scupper hole and it cracks. And so I would take a look at every single one of those because you have no clue how they transported their fishing kayak or that they even know there might be a hairline crack or crack within the scupper hole so pull all those out, take a feel on the inside, and make sure you don't find this out once you get home after you forked over the cash. And now we're getting into the pedal drive system. If you're looking at a kayak with a pedal drive system, guys, these can cost you in between $800 to $1,000. And so if this wasn't taken care of well, and that's what you're trying to get clues from other parts of the kayak, was it taken care of well? Um, the, the repairs on this can be costly. I know the upper transmissions can run $160, $170. Lower transmissions, $110. And so what you want to do is when you look at this, um, um, there should be a little bit of play here, back and forth, not a whole lot of play. And you can kind of see the back when you, this is instant reverse, so there should be just a little bit of play in the midst of there. You can test it dry, but if you have the opportunity to take it to the water and take it out in the water, especially if you're forking over a couple grand for a used kayak, and see how this performs with pressure on the propeller. And what you don't want to hear is any type of grinding sound. Notice how you don't hear anything? So if you have grinding sound, it likely means the bearings on the inside of your upper transmission or lower transmission have been compromised. Uh, and dirt or even water is getting in there so the seals weren't correctly tightened. And so this is all gonna cost you money down the road, so things to be looking for. I've actually did a six part video series on how to take these apart and how to work on them, how to replace shear pins, how to, how to grease the upper transmission and lower transmission. And so I'll throw that playlist in the link below if you're looking at a propel drive specifically and want to know what to be looking for. I actually have a couple of these drives. Another question you might want to ask them is how often do they grease and lubricate? Native said this should be done every 75 days of normal use. And so ask them what type of grease because you're only supposed to use this finish line uh, Teflon grease they use for bicycles. So you want to make sure that grease is compatible. A lot of questions. I don't want to go into a deep dive here, but check out those videos. All right, so let's move on to the next red flag. All right, next thing you want to do is look at the seat. This is a new one. However, if your seat looks like the front row videos at a Blockbuster, why am I so old? Um, then it likely means that this has been out in the sun, maybe stored incorrectly, or maybe just fished a lot. And so what you don't want to happen is when you take this thing out and you drop back into your seat and it rips or breaks on you because these seats cost sometimes two, three, four hundred dollars depending on the type of seat you got and the type of kayak that you got. So um, take a real nice close look at this bad boy because they're expensive. All right guys, when it comes to kayaks, a lot of times you'll make your money on the accessories when you're buying used. But the key here is making sure that the accessories that you're getting actually work. If it comes with a fish finder and battery, ask them to charge that battery so you can test out the fish finder when you get there. There's other things you should take consider as well. Should probably come with a paddle. Is that paddle a bending branches paddle or is it a piece of garbage that you can buy for $30 on Amazon? Also something to take consideration. Also, does it come with some type of personal flotation device? This and this, they look the same. However, this one's US Coast Guard approved. This one is not. This one's gonna get me in trouble and it has with the game warden and this one is not going to. So just keep that in mind. All right, a few more tips for you, obviously. If you're just throwing red flags left and right, there's probably something wrong with it or it might even be stolen. I was reading an article recently of how people will actually post like stock photos of a desirable fishing kayak. And whenever they get an interested buyer, they don't actually have that kayak in their possession, but they know where they can steal one when they find an interested buyer. You, so stay away from listings that actually don't have multiple pictures of a used kayak in them because you might be getting yourself into a problem. So guys and girls, if you're looking for a used fishing kayak, or just getting into the game, I got a video for you. Nine kayak fishing mistakes I made and you should avoid right there.